everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and I am a history teacher in Brooklyn. I teach high school economics and also government. And today I figured that I would share with you guys a list of five books that I would like to recommend because there's so many out there and there's still so many that I have not yet read. But when I think about books that I think history teachers would enjoy, these are the five that come to my mind. And so I wanted to share them with you. I only have two with me in person. The other three are actually in my parents' house. So I left a whole library of books there when I moved because in our one bedroom apartment that has literally like two closets in this entire apartment, space is so limited that I had to leave my collection of books at home and so let's just get into this here are my five history book recommendations of course these are for teachers but they can also be for anyone who just wants to read and learn more about history first book Lies My Teacher Told Me by James W. Lowen. Now this is a classic. A friend of mine had given this to me years ago when uh, I think I wasn't even a teacher yet, but they knew that I loved history and she loved history, so she had given me the book. Still haven't given it back to her. Uh, but this was the first book that just made me like, wow, it's so true. Like. Everything that I learned in school, especially the chapters and the information about Columbus and uh, they have a lot of his journals in the book, everything about the book just is like tearing down what we thought we knew. Now a lot of the content in the book has become a lot more mainstream now and um, much more common knowledge with the way that we teach today in the classroom, but it is still a good read for sure. Um, they cover so many different topics. Again, Columbus, I believe, is one of the first chapters in the book, but it is a great, great book to read for history teachers, and it will broaden and just change the way that you think and change the way that you present information to your students. The second book, I have here the Nazi officer's wife and this is by Edith Hahn Beer this is a true story so the author is actually the woman um, that this entire book is about it is an autobiography uh, Edith Hahn Beer was a woman who grew up during the Holocaust she was actually in college and she had to stop her studies of becoming a lawyer and in order to escape what was happening she ends up marrying a nazi officer what like this book is awesome before that she was also sent to labor camps um she was given fake ids by her friends the just her entire story is just so different from the normal uh stories that we read and that we learn about when it comes to the holocaust um i believe there are images yep there's also images in the book so you get to like see and know about the actual people that she was discussing. A lot of the documentation that was either forged or given to her is also in the book. It is an amazing, amazing read. She did pass away in 2009, uh, but her story is just, it's just not the norm. And I think that that's, or maybe it is the norm, but as far as the books that are usually written about people who have survived the Holocaust, it's usually people that were in concentration camps, at least those are the ones that I'm the most familiar with, or of course someone like Anne Frank who was hiding, but I believe that this story is so different because it comes from the young adult perspective. It's not about a child, but it's about people our age more or less and how they were dealing with what was happening and for Edith to go as far as marrying a Nazi officer, which ultimately saved her life, um, is just one of the most amazing stories I have ever read. This was also a recommendation to me by an English teacher who knows that I love this stuff. I think most of my books were recommendations, so my friends know me well. Third book I do not have with me, but this one is 1491 from Charles C. Mann. And again, this is a pretty famous book about what the Americas were like 
uh, before Columbus. And so it really just allows us to break down any ideas that we were taught about natives and the way that they lived and having this wilderness that they were just living off of. That's not true. We know that so many natives in the Americas as a whole had a functioning economic system and they had a society that was functioning. And so it just provides so much more insight to what life was like before colonization and so I would definitely re recommend that book to you if you are interested in learning more about that specific topic. The entire book is focused on that, 1491 by Charles C. Mann. My next book recommendation, this is probably like a high school classic. Uh, this is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I hope I'm saying that right. But Animal Farm was a book that I read in high school and then I just recently reread it when I had to teach global history last year. And if you don't know, this book is an allegory for the Russian Revolution. So, so many of the characters are supposed to be people that were involved during the revolution. And so I would really recommend this book for you to read. And also if you are teaching the Russian Revolution in your class, this would be a great supplemental read as well. And my final recommendation, At the Dark End of the Street by Daniel L. McGuire. Now I have to cover the title because there is like um, a word here that YouTube will flag. Uh, but if you were to Google it, you will see what that word is. But everything about this book is just amazing. It talks about the life of Rosa Parks in so much detail. And then it will also like discuss all of the other women that played such a role in the civil rights movement, um, especially when they talk about the churches and how even the men had such a role to play. I remember this one specific scene where Rosa Parks was pretty much helping organize a lot of the resistance and there was a moment where everyone was like talking about it in church and because women still didn't have a voice in church when she should have been the one to speak, MLK was actually chosen to speak on behalf of the entire movement because they didn't want her to voice anything in church because still in that setting, uh, women's voices were not supposed to be heard. And so it's just so cool. There's so much about it. The way that the author writes things, I just, I love it so much. And then they open up about the story of Reese Taylor, or if you pronounce it, Recky Taylor. But her story, her, her life, and how Rosa Parks had such a role in that investigation of everything that happened to her. It's just a great way to start the book. It's a great way to introduce Rosa Parks. I cannot talk about this book enough. When I was reading it, I was posting about it 24 seven. It is just an amazing, amazing book. And the way that the author is able to so creatively put the story together, Again, I wish that I could find all of the other lines that just captivated me. But when she said something like, while MLK was still in high school and had no idea that he would be the face of this movement, Rosa Parks was putting in the work. And it was just like, exactly. Like, it's just so... She, she obviously puts it in a much more eloquent way, but I just love the way that the book is written. There's so many pieces of information, so many facts, so many stories that connect with each other. If there were one book, like if you are obsessed with the civil rights movement and you would want to know more, I would suggest reading that book first. These are the five books that I would say go for it, go crazy, read these books because in my opinion they are awesome reads and um, they have really just enhanced my understanding of history and it just helps me fall back in love with my subject and my passion. So that's pretty much it. These are my book recommendations and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and do not forget to subscribe.